My earliest memory of prayer is when uh, my parents would pray with me, now I lay me down to sleep right before bed, and also the, I guess, the supper time prayer would, uh, God is great, God is good. So uh, that's what I remember the most. And then I do remember going to uh, uh, church and there were some men that you just didn't want to pray because it took a long, long time. <laughs> and so I knew about those long, long prayers uh, as well. Uh, my earliest memory of prayer was in 1999 when I was incarcerated. There was an old woman in jail and she asked me if I knew the Lord's Prayer. And I said, what is that? No one had ever taught me to pray when I was little. And she taught me the Lord's Prayer. And I remember every day practicing it until I got the Lord's Prayer right because I wanted to know it. My father's a pastor. I grew up in the church. Early as I can remember, uh, my earliest memories, I remember uh, being taught uh, nighttime prayer. You know, now I lay me down, you know, to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. So I said that on a nightly basis. You know, we were a faith-filled family early on, and my earliest memories are at my bedside, you know, with my mom or my dad and the now I lay me down to sleep prayer. That's really as far back as I can remember. I was 10 years of age and my grandmother had uh, uh, had a massive stroke and it was the first time I'd really ever heard my mother cry. And it, it was painful even for a 10 year old boy because I could tell that she was majorly distraught and uh, I just remember praying to God and, and, you know, and, and asking to take the pain away from my mom and make my grandmother better. Honestly, I really don't even know the first, my first recollection of prayer. It was one of my trips through a treatment. Seeing nature and this, that, and forth piqued my interest with something outside that was greater than me. To ask me when is the best time for me to pray is, uh, is, to, is, is like asking me when is the best time to breathe. Uh, for me, I have learned in doing the work that I do that, that, that breath is essential. In, in, in working with folks who have a terminally ill diagnosis, breath and heartbeat is the measure of life. And so when am, when am I praying? When do I need to pray? How often do I need to breathe? You know, whenever, whenever I need to. I sit with my assistant chief right now and before we go into meetings and or we have a significant decision to make, we pray, you know, we pray about it. I have four kids and it's impossible to wake up before all of them because they're young and they wake up very early. Um, but I have found that those early mornings, that those few mornings that I can get up ahead of them um, in the stillness of the house, um, I find that like that is the most meaningful um, space, something about walking into an empty living room in a quiet house when the sun isn't up yet. Um, I feel the presence of God and I feel my prayers. My best time to pray is early in the morning before everybody gets up to, I've got a place that I go in, in the bonus room, my one corner of the house that I sit in a chair. and It's just the quiet time there I can like focus on and meditate. I pray all the time, but I never lay down without praying. Yeah, never go to sleep without praying. In my truck, I love, sometimes I will be in my truck and I will just have to say, thank you, Jesus. And cars riding by will just look at me, but I'll just thank him because I have a, a red Jeep and it's my first truck, my first vehicle. And I don't know, I just feel so grateful. For me, I, they've got prayer rooms at various churches, and that wouldn't be where I'd go. I don't know why that is. That just seems too sanitary. To me, it just might just be where it's at. You know, if you pull it over on the side of the road, or you're just going down the road and you turn the radio off, um, or I may see something and go, you know, please, dear Lord, please be with these folks. I know they're struggling right now. I know they're, in, you know, times are rough for them. We have a great deck on the back of the house and uh, it's a big wide open field behind our house and you can see the sun coming and um, I love to sit out there and just it's quiet. We live in a rural area and um, to hear the, the, the quiet of the morning, you know, um, is a really powerful um, way to experience God. I love to be out there, outside. Um, if I'm nervous then about one of my family members or when they're out, I pray at home, or if I um, am in the car and I hear something on the news, on the radio, and if 
I hear a car crash, I pray sometimes for somebody that I don't even know. I like to, uh, in the, in the shower, and something about the steam and the water and it just being cleansed and the intimacy. No one there to bother you or ain't got to be all shy, none of that stuff, just freedom. When I'm not hearing anything, it's hard for me to stay still. But when I'm hearing something from somebody, if my eyes are closed and I can imagine it in my head, then I can sit still and listen and imagine it. When I feel inner turmoil and struggle and lack of satisfaction with my day or my week or my month, usually if I do a self-check, it's because I've let my, my world get way too busy and way too noisy. I've watched too much football or television or whatever's on, television, or on TV. I've let the radio go on the, on the station that I like to listen to instead of turning it off and embracing the silence. I'm not really good at sitting quietly. Um, I should try it more often, I think. It is not difficult for me to sit in silence at all because of my four kids. Um, when I get a chance to be in silence, I relish it. I take advantage of it. I soak every bit of it in. I guess what helps me to be still and, and to be quiet is um, sometimes when I take breaks that I do come out around the farm um, where I practice and um, just walk around. Maybe I'm leaning up against the fence petting a horse um, or just staring over the fence. Sometimes it's just nice just to stare off into space and get quiet and hear. I think it's, it's important that when, when our life seems out of balance that we know how to write that. And one of the ways we write it is not doing things but sitting in silence. Sometimes a, a good way for me to focus maybe to watch a candle or to look at a blowing tree in the breeze. Nature and natural things seem to nourish uh, one's seeking silence. I pray because I, I, need, I need God. I pray because I can't solve problems on my own. I pray because I want to follow Jesus closely and He calls us to pray. And I pray because I feel drawn to God. I feel like the Spirit nudges me and urges me to pray. You know, I'm human, I make mistakes. I've got, you know, things that I want that may not be in line with what God wants for me. So, you know, I pray for God to protect me from myself. You know, I pray, uh, you know, just for Him to take care of me and, and Pray for the people that, that lead me and pray for the people that I've been entrusted the responsibility to lead. Prayer has been at the core of finding peace, comfort, meaning and purpose, and direction. And also feeling like I'm not alone in the world, that I do walk with others and I walk with a very loving creator. Like I said, prayer is just as simple as you and I sitting here talking. I talk to my father all day long. I know that He saved me, I know that He brought me off the streets, and I know He has an awesome purpose and plan for me. Prayer is just, it is my life. I'm constantly praying for people's goodwill and people's health and my welfare. And uh, if I pray over a, a meal, I'm praying for lots of different things. Prayer and the Lord, and Scripture, uh, and get more involved in doing more things, that is, in a nutshell, that's life for me.